Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect and today we're going to create a composite together using green screen. Now, of course, you're going to learn how to extract the subject out of a green background. But here's the thing. I would not recommend using green screens, especially when it comes to compositing and still photography. Video is fine because you have a lot of frames to deal with, but when it comes to still photography and you capture your subject with a green screen, usually what happens is the green color spills onto the subject, especially around the edges, the hair, it gets difficult to remove. However, we will learn how to deal with this today in this tutorial. Obviously, green screen has its own advantages. It's pretty quick, so it's gonna be fun. So without any further ado, let's get started. For this episode, let's show some love to our Patreon, David, who submitted the photo for this tutorial. You can follow his work over here. And the model is Emmy. She's awesome, David's daughter, and you can follow her over here. So here we are back in Photoshop. And if you're wondering which background would be ideal for capturing subjects meant for compositing, it should be 50% gray or any shade of gray that contrasts with the subject. That's it. All right. So here we are in the beautiful world of Photoshop. And if you want to go ahead and download any of the sample photos, check the links in the description if you want to follow along. All right. First of all, we open the background, right? If you don't know how to open the backgrounds or any image, just let me show you how to do that. So we'll find out our finder and inside of that finder, we'll just drag it and drop it into Photoshop. Or you can go file open the regular old stuff. Now, on top of it, we will place the subject. Now, there are two ways to place the subject. Number one, very simple. Just go to your finder, drag your subject and drop it over the canvas, over the image, and you're good to go. Hit enter. It opens up as a smart object and we are happy to receive it. Let's go ahead and delete this and let me show you the other way. The other way is simply going to file and then place embedded. Both do the same thing. They both place the subject embedded to the PSD as a smart object. So let's locate the subject and simply click on place. And it does the exact same thing. We have our subject here. Hit enter. Hope you're enjoying this tutorial so far. Just wanted to stop by and let you know that this show is available to you for free by the support of our amazing Patreons. They support Pix Imperfect on patreon.com slash Pix Imperfect. It makes it possible for us to create all these content for you for free. So please do consider supporting Pix Imperfect on patreon.com. Also, there are a lot of rewards and perks for supporting Pix Imperfect, as you can see from the website. But here's the thing that allows us to do what we love, and that is teaching you. Now, it's completely voluntary. Listen, you watching the video means a lot to us. You don't need to do anything else, but if you want to support us to do what we love, please do consider it. Now, the next step, that is step number three, is very important, and that is matching the perspectives. Sometimes we look at a composite and we go, hey, the color is matching, the light is all right, and the shadows look amazing, but there's something which is just not looking right. I can't put a finger on it, but something is wrong over there. Most of the time, in those cases, the perspective is wrong. What I mean by that is, for example, you have the background taken from a low angle and you have the subject taken from a higher angle. You cannot match the subject with that of the background. You have to match the perspectives. Have a look at it. So first off, what we need to do is let's hide the subject. And then simply you can draw lines. We need to select the line tool. If you cannot see it, if you can just see the rectangle, you can just click and hold and it will show you all the tools for the shapes. Just select the line tool and you'll be good. Make sure you choose pixels because if you don't want to create any path or a shape, choose pixels. Weight seven pixels is fine. Weight is actually the thickness of the line. And then we can choose white or any other color. Just create a new layer on top of everything. And we can name it background BG perspective. Okay, BGP. All right, press D to reset the swatches and make sure the foreground color is white. You can press the letter X to toggle between the foreground and the background. So let's press X and let's create lines along the perspective. So this is the road goes this way. Just drag it all the way. Let's make one more line from here. Doesn't have to be very accurate. So we know it's matching over there and that is called the vanishing point. Now press Control or command R to show up the rulers. Okay. Just click and drag from here and drag it to that point. Now we can draw a line through this line. 
just like this. And this ruler was just for guidance. Okay, now we have a perspective. We have an idea. Let's draw one more line through it just like this. And to hide the guides, you can press Ctrl or Command semicolon. Okay, great. Now let's create one for the subject. Let's turn it off. Let's turn on the subject. Let's create one more layer and let's create it on top of the subject. And this is subject, whoops, and perspective, P. Great. Now for this, let's, we have to guess because we don't have any lines over there. We have to guess for this one. We have to just zoom in and guess. And let's change the color for the subject. Let's change the color to, let's say, red so that we can just differentiate between the two. So zoom in and just look at the creases and we have to guess by human instinct of how it would have been. Okay, it would have been this way, something like this. I think it's pretty okay. Look at the shadows and try to infer from it. Okay, let's do it on the other side. I guess it would, would have been like this. This looks pretty all right. And then from there, you can also drag in a ruler and draw a line through it, just like this. Press Ctrl or Command semicolon to hide the guides. You can also draw a line just like this. And this one is for the subject. Now you can now turn on the background. We have to match these two. And to be able to do that, simply select both the subject perspective and the subject. And how did I do that? This is selected, hold the control or command, select the subject, both of them are now selected. Then press control or command T for the transformation tool. Now let's align both of them together, just like so. Okay, now the perspectives of them are matching and it should look perfect when the green thing is removed. Now you can control the size and all the other aspects later, just for now, just make sure the perspectives are match. And we can turn this off, we can delete it, doesn't even matter, but we can just turn it off for now. Now the next step, that is step number four, is removing the green background. And here's how to do it. Let's just make sure the subject is visible. And you can turn off the background, not really needed at this moment. And then simply go to select and then color range. Now inside of color range, you select this eyedropper tool right over there and click on an area which is green. Now, if you're seeing it this way, it means the selection preview is grayscale. For the beginning, you can change it to none so that you can actually see the image with the green background and decrease the fuzziness all the way to zero. Okay, now let's move around the image. And once you have clicked on this eyedropper tool and clicked on any of the greens, then you need to choose the plus eyedropper tool and just start adding the greens. You can also start with a plus eyedropper tool, but what happens is if it already had selected some other colors, it creates a problem. So make sure you start with this one, the regular eyedropper tool, and then once you pick a green, move to the plus. And then let's start adding different shades of green around the subject from different areas. Looks great. Now while you're picking up the greens with the eyedropper tool and it's just not selecting the right color, just make sure that this is not point sample. The sample size should be higher, 5 by 5 or 11 by 11, so that it takes an average color of the surrounding areas. Okay, now we can change the selection preview to grayscale and we can see which areas are selected, which areas are not. So white are the areas which are selected, black are the areas which are not selected. Now you can go ahead and increase the fuzziness accordingly. If you increase it too much, parts of the subject will also be selected. We don't want that, okay? A good way to look at it is changing the selection preview to black matte or white matte. Let's change it to black matte. Now you see the selection in color and everything else in black, but we want the subject selected, right? Let's go ahead and check invert this invert the selection and gives you a real time preview now let's play with the fuzziness now the hairs look okay if you go too much see the subject is being deselected we don't want that we want to find a place where the subject is nicely selected let's change it to grayscale and see whether the subject is subject selection is okay 
Let's zoom out. This is pretty okay. 108 is not bad, but I'll go with, let's say 75. But the problem with 75 is if I go to black mask, you can see the greens over there. That's okay. We can take care of this. Now, once you have done this, hit okay. Now you have the subject selected because we checked the invert at the end. Now, all we need to do, we need to click on this button, the create mask button. Now we have the subject on its own layer. We can now turn it on and we are pretty much good to go. Of course, we need to clean up the mask. The next step, that is step number five, is refining the mask. When we remove the green out of the box using color range or any other method, there's a tiny bit of green remaining around the edge. Also, the mask is just not perfect with the shadows and the folds of the green in the background. We just have to take care of that. Let's do it. Back in Photoshop, as you can see, the mask is just not perfect. Let's zoom in and let's go ahead and make the mask visible, just the mask. Hold the Alt or the Option key and just simply click on the mask. This makes just the mask visible. Now let's zoom in and just select the regular brush B and then let's make the brush a little bigger. Make sure the foreground color is black and just paint out these things. It's just, we don't need it. It's the shadow and all the other things that we don't want. Let's zoom in. We need to be a little careful over here. Let's make the brush a little smaller and paint it there accidentally and just paint out the areas, the extras. All right, so here we are, it looks pretty good. However, around the edge, there are a couple problems. As you can see here, a little bit of the leaking is there because the background color went a little different because of the shadow. Here as well, there are a couple of things that we need to take care of and there's a special way to do it. And it is by simply changing the blend mode of the brush to overlay. If you just go ahead and change the blend mode to overlay and you have black selected, it just won't paint on the white areas. Have a look. Even if I try to paint, it, it just won't paint on this area. It just won't. Let's go back. Okay. So if I try to remove this over here, let's go ahead and decrease the flow to around 20%. And let's just try to remove that. See, it's just not painting on that area. And just be slow, gradual and patient when dealing with stuff like this. See, there's, it's kind of frying up around the edge. So in that case, you need to paint over it again. So let's continue doing all of these areas using overlay. Now we have done our best over here. Just make the subject visible and then remove the other extra areas that we can see. So hold the Alt or Option again and click on the mask to look at the subject. Now let's zoom out. First of all, let's remove all of this. Change the blend mode, blend mode back to normal and then just simply paint with black over here. Increase the flow to 100 and just remove this first and all of the extra areas and then we will deal with the edges. I think most of it is good. Now let's zoom in and just take care of the edges from top to bottom. Let's change the blend mode to overlay and let's start painting over here. This is okay. We're going to take care of the greens around the edge. Don't worry about it. Just have a look at the edge. The edge is very sharp over here. So we'll just try to erase as much as we can. Okay. Great. It's pretty green, but it's fine. This one's pretty green. And we will try to remove the shadow from here. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, it's kind of pretty blending in and it's not looking bad. Here as well, there's a lot of uh, shadow that needs to be gone. Anything else? Everything else looks, else looks okay here. It's pretty good. Let's zoom out. Now our subject is very nicely extracted. As you can see, the perspectives are matching and it's looking great. Now. If you want to adjust the size, there's a way to do it. Moving to step number six and step number six is adjusting the size and position. There's a way to do it properly. And there's a reason why we made the perspective. Let's move into Photoshop and check it out. Time for us to turn on the subject perspective. 
We can also turn on the background perspective for reference. Now select the subject perspective and the subject. So hold the control or command, select the other one. Both of them are now selected. Then press control or command T. Place the anchor point on the vanishing point. So hold the Alt or Option, click here to place the anchor point there. You could have also dragged it and dropped it over there. Now zoom out and hold the Shift and Option. And then you make it big. What happens is this way, the perspective always stays aligned. Have a look. Even if we make it big, it stays aligned with the background. See? So this is fine. This is pretty okay. Hit enter or return. You can do a little bit of cheating. You can move a little bit to the left or right. It's okay. A little bit is fine. Select the subject. Let's move the subject a little bit to the left. Press control or command T and we can actually move her to the left with the arrow keys just a little bit, a touch. Once you're ready, hit the enter or return and then just simply turn off the subject and the background perspectives. Done. Step number seven is adjusting the greens and removing them from the edges. Let's zoom in and do that. Okay. So for that, we need to create a hue saturation adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose hue saturation. Now with the help of the hand tool that you see right over there, click on that hand tool and then take a sample of the greens. It shows you yellows, but let's try again. So seems like the greens are closer to yellows. Doesn't matter right now. All we need to do, we need to take the hue and the saturation all the way to the right. The thing is, apart from the subject, it's also affecting the background. We don't want that to happen. We want to limit it just to the subject. So we will click on this button. This is create clipping mask button. It creates a clipping mask, limiting it just to the subject. Let's make the properties a little wider so that you can select the colors better. Now, this is the range of colors that we have targeted. Let's make the range narrower. Okay. And then from the middle, let's move it so that most of the green is selected, as you can see over here. Now let's expand it. We don't want our subject's face to be selected. Let's make it narrower. This is fine. Now let's adjust the side sliders. This makes the transition of the area which is targeted and the area which is not targeted softer, smoother. Let's do it to the right and side as well. Let's make sure most of it is selected. Okay, we are pretty much good. Now bring back the saturation and hue to zero. Let's bring them back to zero. And now let's adjust them, zoom in, and let's see which hue or saturation looks good over there with the background. And that's the whole point. You need to create the composite with the background there because you want to know how the subject would react to the background. Sometimes greens would just work and you don't have to do a thing because the background might be full greenery. But in this case, we need to work it out. Okay, now once you have brought them back to zero, you might see how did this become green? Here's the thing, when you select the colors and then you change back to master, you will see that the second green is created. That's the regular green and greens are the ones that we selected. So if you close this and if you open the properties again, masters, you see no selection. You have to go ahead and select back the greens. Okay. Anyway, once we select the range of colors that we need to target, just play with the hue. See what works for this. You can also just drag it from there. Wow. That actually solves it. Let's take it a little bit to the left. Okay, let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Looks so much more better, isn't it? So let's zoom out and have a look at the overall image. So this is the before with all the greens and this is the after solves most of it. Not all of it, but most of it. Have a look again, before, after. Now we need to play with the saturation. More saturation or less saturation? Just a little less saturation would be fine. This is okay. All right, we are done solving here, but there's a little bit of green here that needs to be solved. To take care of excess greens, we need to create one more hue saturation adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose hue saturation. 
Again, click on the clipping mask button. And this time we know, we actually, let's make it a little less wider. We know that this should have been gray, right? So we'll just simply decrease the saturation to minus 100 or just a little bit of it. Okay, that's good. Now select the mask, press Control or Command I. Now simply take the brush, make sure the foreground color is white, press X, and then just simply paint on those areas with white. Make sure you change the blend mode back to normal. Don't forget to do that. And just paint to take care of the greens. You can increase saturation a bit. That's why I recommended not to use green backgrounds when capturing stuff like this. This is okay. All right. Now, you know what? When I look back at it, I might have to do something with the mask. So let's go back to the mask and let's take the brush and paint white in these areas. Let's see. Oh, so it's all green. Let's get it back. Is it really necessary? Something about this is just not looking right. Let's go ahead and remove all of this area. We just don't need this area. Change the blend mode back to overlay with the mask selected. And then let's paint black over here. Or let's change it to normal because it's very heavily selected. Just erase this. A little softer edge is fine, doesn't matter much. You can change it back to overlay and then just paint along the edge to make it, make it a little more rough. Yeah, looks pretty good. And let's do it over here as well. Let's play with the normal because it's just not removable. Okay, let's get it back to overlay and then just paint it with black. It's pretty good. And great, zoom out and have a look. It looks pretty nice. Also, we might have to do something around the legs. If you have a look, it just looks too dark and green. We might have to create one more hue saturation adjustment layer and take down the saturation, right? Just like this. Select the mask, press control or command I, click on the clipping mask button and then take the brush, foreground color white and just paint over here. It's too green. Change the blend mode to normal. Don't forget to do that. And I'm forgetting again and again. See how the green spills? Okay, zoom out. We are in good shape. The next step is also one of the most important steps of a composite and that is matching the subject with the background. I actually have a series on that. So check out the series right here. Also, we recently did a tutorial on that, a very in-depth tutorial. You can also check that out. Links are in the description. All right. So to do that, first of all, we need to create a luminosity mask. Now, what is a luminosity mask? It shows you everything but the color, no colors shows you the lights and the luminosity of the image. So create a solid color adjustment layer, select any color with saturation zero, hit OK and change the blend mode to color. It shows you just the brightness. Okay, now let's go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer on top of this hue saturation. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now, if you do anything, it affects both the subject and the background. So we need to click on this button called create clipping mask button. Now let's play with it. Let's delete the point. Let's zoom in just a little bit. Now with the help of the hand tool, we need to make this area a little darker. So click and drag it down. I guess that is fine. But when we zoom out, the darks are too dark. So we need to just brighten the darks a little bit, just a tad bit. This is okay. Maybe let's make her a little more darker. This looks all right. So let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, not matching. This is the after. So we have pretty much matched it. So now we don't need it. Let's go ahead and delete this layer. Now, as you can see, the saturation is out of place. So first we need to match the saturation. To check the saturation, you can simply create a selective color adjustment layer with red selected. Just decrease the blacks. Just make sure absolute is checked and do it with all the colors. Do it with yellow, green, cyan's, blues, and magentas. But when it comes to these three whites, just increase the blacks neutrals 
and blacks. Great. Now, all you see is saturation in black and white, which means that the brighter the area, the more close to white an area is, the more saturated the area is, the darker the area, the less saturated the area is. All right. So just look at the face because her dress is already gray, doesn't matter. So we need to create a hue saturation adjustment layer on top of the curves. Click on the create mask button, create clipping mask button, and then adjust the saturation. Minus 20 is good. Now let's turn this off and it looks pretty good. Maybe we need to go minus 12. Let's turn this on. You know what, the hair saturation was okay, but the face saturation needs to go away. So this hair is okay, but only the face needs to be a little adjusted. 14 is good. Select the mask, press Control or Command I. Now just take the brush, make sure the foreground color is white and paint on the face. Here as well, here, and it's pretty much good. Let's zoom out and we need to just delete the selective color. We don't need it anymore. Have a look, here's the before. The face was too saturated and here is the after. Now, let's match the colors and to be able to see only the colors, no highlights, midtones or shadows, only the colors, we need to do this. We need to create a solid color adjustment layer. Select mid gray, 50% gray. Hue and the saturation zero and brightness 50. It doesn't matter what hue you choose once the saturation is zero. Anyway, so just make sure the hue saturation is zero and the brightness is 50, especially saturation zero, brightness 50. Hit okay. Okay, all right, hit okay. And then change the blend mode to luminosity. Now you see only the color. To amplify it, you can create a curves adjustment layer on top of it. And just let's make an S curve just to see it more clearly. Okay. Now on top of the hue saturation, and we're gonna turn this off later, the color fill and the curves on top. This is just to check. We're gonna create a curves adjustment layer. Okay, click on this button again, and then let's go to the red channel. If you think you wanna decrease the amount of red on this area, it's, it's just standing out. Select the hand tool, click and drag it down. See what helps. No, not really. What if we drag it up? A little bit, just a tad bit. This is okay. Let's go to the green channel. Let's see what we can do here. Just with the dress selected, just drag it down. Is it helping? Yes, it is, a little bit. If I increase it, is it helping? Not really. So we're gonna decrease it just a touch and maybe with the face, we can see what helps. Increasing it just a little bit helps. And then let's go to blues, work on the face. Decreasing it, increasing it, maybe decreasing it helps a little. All right, we are pretty much done with this. Let's turn this off. Didn't do much of an impact, but here's the before, here's the after does help us match that with that of the background. Before, after. Maybe I'll just decrease the opacity a bit. Let's keep it 65-ish, that's great. Man, now you know what? We are done matching the subject with that of the background, but it's still not matching, you know why? Because we have not added the shadows. So step number nine is simply adding the shadows. Now we need to add the shadows under the subject. Let's scroll down and create a layer above the background layer, just a simple layer. And you can name this shadow if you want to, just like so, and then zoom in. Simply just take the brush, make sure the flow is somewhere around maybe four or 5%, four percent is great. And the soft round brush, the general brush, soft round brush, and zoom in. Foreground color should be black, black selected. You can also press D to set it to default, and then just start painting the shadows like this. Just zoom in and start painting it. Maybe I'll go with 2% over here. You can also try changing the blend mode to multiply, but that will be seen later. You can also refer the original shadow of the subject to paint the shadow. So you can hold the shift key, click on the mask button to turn it off. Look how the shadow was. Hold the shift key again, click on the mask button, now let's go ahead and go to the shadow layer and just paint the shadows. Just make it soft because it's an overcast sky in this background. It seems so. 
and hold the shift key, click on it again, see how the shadow was over here. It was just a soft shadow. Let's zoom out just a little bit and maybe I'll just increase the flow. It's too much. All right, so we have made it. We need to erase a little bit over here. So hold the E key that will take you to the eraser. Now strange brush is selected. We need to select the soft round brush and erase it. Let's go back, erase too much. Hold the E key again. Let's make the razor a little bigger. This looks pretty good. Release the E key, it will get you back to the brush. So if you just press the E key, it will take you to the eraser tool. Press the B key, take you to the brush tool. But if you're working on a brush, hold the E key, takes you to the eraser tool, and then you release the E key, takes back to the brush tool. So that's a quick tip over there. Quick tips for you. Don't worry about that area, we're gonna take care of that. Okay, that looks pretty good. You know what, I'll just decrease the opacity. Just like so. And maybe create one more layer for the shadow. Shadow two, and start painting nearby. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we're gonna merge both of these. Select layer one, hold the controller command, select the shadow, press control or command E, okay? And you can just name this shadow. And that was for our convenience. Now, shadows are always just not black. They have a tint of some other color. So let's go ahead and create a solid color adjustment layer and then choose any color, let's choose red and hold the Alt or Option and clip them to just the shadow. Hold the Alt or Option, click on the line between these two. That way it's only limited to this area. Now. It's looking strange, I know. So I need to double click here and pick a color from the ground. So let's pick something like this color. I know it looks strange, but you need to wait for it. This color is fine. You can also increase the saturation a little bit and then hit OK. And change the blend mode of the shadow to multiply. You can also do this after you change that to multiply and then you work with it. Maybe decrease the saturation. Maybe go to brightness and decrease it a little bit. Maybe go to hue and change the hue a little bit. So you can work it out. Okay, it looks great, the shadow is great, but something in the ground is just not looking right. You know what, this area is just not looking right. Hold the shift key, click on the mask to see what it was. Oh, there was a fold over there. So we need to place something over there. What if I place a leaf? So zoom in and just move to the background. And that's what the next step is, adjusting the ground, making sure that everything looks right. So step number 10 is getting the ground right. So let's make a selection of the leaf. With the lasso tool, it's fine. It's just make a selection. Doesn't really matter how accurate this is. A rough selection is okay, you know. Nobody's gonna give you an award for this. Press Control or Command J. Now we have the left leaf on his own layer and take it above the subject. So above all the adjustments right there, right here. Now, with the help of the Move tool, let's move it over here. Let's zoom out, let's place it right there. Looks pretty cool there. Okay. Now, we need to make it darker as well. Of course, we need to match it with that. So create a curves adjustment layer. Click on the Create Clipping Mask button and then just darken it accordingly, just like so. Again, as you can see, it's very saturated. So we're gonna create a Hue Saturation Adjustment layer. Create Clipping Mask button, just decrease the saturation to match that with the surroundings. And maybe you wanna change the hue a little bit. Okay, we got it right. Now we need to just erase a couple areas. So select this. So this is the leaf. You can just name it leaf. You have to, all right. So let's adjust the mic. It's coming in the way a little. All right, so click on the mask button and take the brush and just paint some areas with black. All right, the flow is very low. It's, this is fine. Now just under the leaf, we might have to create some shadows for it to look realistic. So let's create one layer over here and you can name it shadow of the leaf. I'm gonna name it SL. Take the brush, foreground color black, flow a little low somewhere around six is fine. Just paint a little when you're, you know, 
a little bit here and there. It's fine. Alrighty, we got the shadows okay. Maybe we'll just go ahead and add a curves adjustment layer and maybe let's add something to the dress. Let's try adding a little red. Does that help? Maybe it does a little bit. So click on the create clipping mask button, select the mask, press control or command I. Then with the brush selected foreground color white, just paint on her dress. Increase the flow, 100, 100. You don't need to be super accurate here. Just simply paint. Red is not helping. Let's go to blues and let's decrease the blues. Probably, yes. Now that is helping. Zoom out. See, here's the before, here's the after. Just a little bit of blues decreased. That is helping us a lot. Okay, great. Now we have adjusted most of it. Now let's blur the background. So step number 11 is simply adding a shallow depth of field or blurring the background. So. Let's make a copy of the background, press Ctrl or Command J, and then convert it into a smart object. Go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filter, so that we can change the values of the blur later. Hit OK. And then Filter, Blur Gallery, and then Tilt Shift. All right. Now, inside of Tilt Shift, you're gonna place this point right over where she's standing because we want that area to be in focus. We accidentally rotated it, just move it there. All right, there we go. Let's move it a little bit to the bottom, just like so. This is cool. Now, as this moves further, it just blurs it. So this is okay. Now let's uh, add a blur of 25. This would be great for this example. 25 is kind of too much. Let's go for 20-ish. This is okay. Now let's create a point over here to maintain this side of the perspective and then just rotate it. You can hold the shift key to rotate it by 15 degrees at a time. And then let's move this point a little outside. And then we're gonna just take this just like this. And we're gonna do the same over here as well. We're gonna create a point just over there Still adjusting that one, okay. Let's hold the shift key while we rotate it. And we're gonna stop just right there at 90 degrees. And let's move it a little to the right. And do the same with this. It's extended. So this is where the blur is zero and this dotted line is where the blur is 20 pixels or wherever you choose. So it's gradual, it goes from zero slowly and gradually to 20. It, okay. Step number 12 is softening the edges. As you can see, if you zoom in, have a look at this. The edges are very sharp. It's a shallow depth of field image, right? The edges need to be a little soft. It's very, very sharp. So we're gonna come back to the mask of the subject and I'm gonna teach you a trick. You can choose the smudge tool, okay? And select a brush called the soft round brush. Just make the brush a little smaller. And with the mask selected, just smudge it in. Just smudge it in. This is very helpful if you have any fringes in the image. Also, it softens the edges. See how nicely it's working? Now, you need to be a little careful here. As the light is coming from the background, it doesn't really matter much how this area looks. This is okay. There's a touch of green over there, you know? So we can actually erase that area. Select the mask, take the brush, and just simply paint that area in black. We don't want that extra thing over there. All right, great. Now let's get back to the smudge. Just push it in like this. You don't have to do for every place, just for the places where the edges are really, really hard, like, this area, that area, maybe this area a little bit. This is fine. That area is good. This area is good as well. Maybe a little bit over here. All of that area is fine. You can also take the brush and change the blend mode to overlay and paint black in a couple areas. Just to remove all those extra greens here and there. All right, we are in good shape. Now at the end, we always do this, is applying global effects. 
to both the subject and the background to make them one. So for this one, let's do something different. We often add color lookup tables, curves, and we can do that. But after that, let's do something different as well. So at the top, we can just add, say, let's add a curves first and brighten the brights and darken the darks. We adding a little contrast here to both the subject and the background, which is pretty cool. And let's add a color lookup table. My favorite for these cases is obviously crisp warm. So color lookup. So we're gonna choose crisp warm and decrease the opacity because it's always too much. Pretty good. All right. And then at the end, let's go ahead and create a stamp visible layer. Press Control Alt Shift E, Command Option Shift and E. This creates a merged layer of everything you see on the canvas right now. So go to File, Convert for Smart Filters and convert this into a smart object. Now go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, hit OK. This converts this into a smart object. Again, go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter and let's do something in Camera Raw. Let's increase the temperature just a little bit, maybe decrease the shadows or increase the shadows. That's totally upon you. Let's adjust it this way, increase the contrast a little bit and decrease the exposure probably a little bit, maybe increase the highlights and let's decrease the clarity and give it a soft effect. Let's try increasing the dehaze. Now let's go to the tone curve and then we will just highlight it and then just add a faded effect. Increase the shadows and take this one down just to add a faded effect right over there. Now you can also sharpen it, but it's not required over here. Hue saturation lightness, split toning really helps. So what do you want the shadow to be colored with? Red is fine. Let's simply increase the saturation. You can also play with different colors over here. Split toning really helps matching the subject with the background. And what do you want the highlights to be? Let's increase the saturation of the highlights with blue selected. And we can try in different colors of see which one works with our image. Yellow works the best. So now let's increase it just a tad bit. This one just a little bit. Now let's go to lens correction stuff and let's increase vignetting. Let's just take it to the left. It really helps a little bit. Okay, now this is fine. Now let's go to effects. Let's add a little bit of grain to it. Grains make the image a little beautiful. Let's zoom in, see. Look at the grains, they look amazing. All right, now post crop vignetting, this one would really help your image. This is okay. Let's adjust the midpoint. We added too much on purpose to see where it's leading to. And then once you've done all of that, you can reduce the values. All right, this looks fine. Let's adjust the midpoint. Okay, that looks okay. Maybe we'll play with the amount. All right, hit okay once you're ready. Just look how far we have come. Have a look. Here was the background. And then we had the subject with the green screen. We removed it, did a ton of adjustments. We blurred it. And then we added the shadow with the color. And then we adjusted the subject and tried to match it with that of the background, removing the green, adding hue saturation and curves. Just let's turn all of them on. And one by one, we did it. Shadow of the leaf as well. We added a leaf and we adjusted the leaf. And these were all the check layers, color fill and curves, doesn't matter much. And don't forget the perspectives. And then a little bit of curves, a little bit of color lookup, and at the end, the camera raw to bring it all together. So I played with shadows, spent a little more time with the image and here is the final result. So this is the before with the green screen and the background and this is the after. That's how to create a composite, the whole process with green screen. Again, see how the problems we faced with green screen? However, it was easier and faster to remove most of the greens in one go. If done properly, if the background had been lit separately and it had no shadows, no folds, would have been so much more easier and would have taken a fraction of this time. So that's how to create a composite using green screen and all the processes that we discussed are just the same. Just a quick little recap, just a quick little summary. First, we opened the background, dropped in the subject, 
matched the perspective. This is very important. Then we removed the green using color range. Then we added a lot of adjustment layers to take care of the greens and match the subject with that of the background, adjusted the ground, we added that leaf. We will do anything possible to make the subject look like she was in that background. We added the shadows and at the end, to make it all one, we added some global effects like the camera off, the curves and the color lookup. And that's all for this video. Hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. Thank you so much for watching this video. It truly means a lot to me. Just keep supporting Piximperfect till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.